We're live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey everybody. Hey guys, and welcome to HackerCast, where we cover the the interesting, cool, innovative things that happen in the application security industry. Uh, you guys are at LASCON. You drinking beer right away to kick off the, no, the video. Like, I see. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even noon yet. Come on, give us some credit. <laughs> I got to so, speak uh, in a couple hours. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then definitely drink. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so where, where are you guys at? What are you guys up to? So, yeah, we're in Austin, Texas at the Lone Star Application Security Conference. <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> yeah, a.k.a. LASCON, right? And so yesterday we actually had a track called the Matt Johansson track. Uh, <laughs> I was on stage for three hours <laughs> just doing my uh, dance. Yeah, I know. I talked at 10 o'clock, I talked at 11 o'clock, and then Robert and I were on the Speed Debates panel later in the afternoon together. So I, was, I earned my badge yesterday. <laughs> So, uh, so what, are the what were you talking about, and were there other interesting talks? Yeah, so I was talking about, uh, well, the, the, the new talk that I gave uh, that I haven't talked about in Hackercast before was with James Wickett of Signal Sciences, uh, and uh, we were talking about rugged DevOps-type uh, information, and really what I was trying to bring to the table there was how to plug application security into the ever- Fastening, you know, getting more rapid uh, development and deployment. So continuous integration, continuous deployment. Where does AppSec fit in there? Uh, so we were talking about all sorts of cool little tools and tips and tricks about, okay, you got a lot of this stuff in the cloud and you're pushing to it really fast in production. You know, traditional security testing and it doesn't really fit in this push 30 day. Times so, what's a, so what's a what's a quick pro tip? Gauntlet. Yeah. <laughs> Be mean to your code. Gauntlet is a tool that I kind of help contribute and cheerlead for, and uh, it, it, what it really is is uh, uh, integrating security into your unit testing and your and your continuous integration Jenkins pipeline, things like that. You're really starting to speak developer. You're speaking their language instead of trying to be the security guy coming in and trying to talk security. You're talking unit tests, right? But your unit testing for SQL injection. And yeah. things like that. It's really interesting. Like do awesome. a, a SQL map against this parameter at, as soon as you do a build and see if anything comes up. And if you see anything other than nothing, it's probably bad. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and uh, you guys said there's a pretty good keynote, right? Like uh, the, the Hellman. Yeah. Yeah, so, I was, uh, so Martin Hellman of uh, Diffie Hellman, uh, also known as Diffie Hellman Merkel, uh, I guess it's the preferred name, um, Key Exchange, he did a presentation as, as a keynote, and I, th the first keynote, there's two keynotes, uh, and I thought it was great actually. Um, he talked a lot about sort of uh, thinking the forward, the forward thinking in security, sort of where it should go. Uh, and how often or how long you should have some sort of crypto system um, be stable for. So he said typically 50 years is kind of what they're, the time horizon they're looking uh, for a piece of cryptography to be s secure before they find enough factoring flaws or whatever they're able to get enough computing power or whatever to the point where they can break it. So one um, of the questions... You, you know, when I was learning about crypto, just to, to stop you there, when I was learning, first learning about crypto, I heard that also, that 50 years, 100 years, sun goes nova thing. Um, when's the last time we had an algorithm, even a strong one, that lasted 50 years? Um, well, we haven't actually had algorithms that uh, have even, I mean, computing in the way we know it today hasn't been around that long. So the answer is we don't know. Well, like how, uh, how about even 10 years, like, you know, RC4 and all these, all these other ones? It seems like everything breaks. We think this one is good, and it lasts for 10, 15 years tops. Yeah. Computers get faster, math yeah. gets easier, and... Things go to crap. <laughs> well, so the idea is 50 years, let's say. Like yeah, even, yeah. Even, even knowing Moore's Law, even all these other things, that that's the time yeah. horizon. But uh, quantum computing came up, and so he's been talking to some of the best quantum cryptographers out there that will actually do him and, uh, as a civilian. And basically he said, you know, 10 years or so before they have like working prototypes uh, from now that really actually can do this kind of thing and then another 10 years from that point where you actually have to worry about your cryptography which means we're not at 50 years we're at 20 years kind of at the kind of max time horizon probably before every piece of crypto that we have right now is um, decrypted 
So he had a couple of different ideas on how to possibly solve that. One involved like a, a key management server where, let's say Matt and I want to talk or something, we both send our private keys to this key server and then send a, and also an encrypted payload to that key server. It encrypts both with Matt's key and my key and sends him the encrypted payload that he kind of decrypts twice, let's say. Uh, and that way, if my crypto ever breaks, you also have to compromise that key server uh, to get the other piece or whatever. So you're doubling up kind of. Yeah, the problem, the thing I don't like about it is it, it basically means that those key servers now know that Matt and I are talking. And so that, that might be the sensitive thing. You don't really want anyone to know that. Uh, not that I, don't want to know, I don't want people to know that I'm talking about <laughs> No one does. Shady business. Uh, but, um, I mean, not that cryptography is supposed to solve that problem, but this would introduce a problem where it didn't necessarily exist before. So anyway, it's very interesting. Um, I don't know if there's any real great takeaways there, but... Uh, I just thought it was cool that they got him. Yeah. Diffie Hellman, it's, it's him, yeah, you know? Exactly. <laughs> the guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so what else we got going on out there? Uh, so, let's see. We saw... Uh, what was the no IP stuff you were talking about earlier this week? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't learn a whole lot about it. Yeah, this is pretty crazy, actually. So... Uh, Microsoft got kind of a bit of bad press about this, but effectively they took over a registrar, um, or a DNS provider rather, called NoIP. Um, it's used by tons and tons of people. They may have like 100,000 customers or something. And the reason they took it over is a lot of malware companies whatever, using NoIP, a real IP address, and just kind of, kind of move people around or whatever. So instead of you know taking down you know the IPs themselves that are hosting the malware, they decided to go after no IP. And they, using some weird quirk in law, effectively Microsoft has sort of this ability through the legal system to completely take over any registrar or any website or any domain that they want, That's which is weird. freaking crazy. So yeah, it, it's it's really bad. So what happened is they pointed all of the IP addresses at their servers, and the idea was they were going to try to preserve uh, the non uh, the non malware sites or whatever, and still route their IP address. But what happened is they did, it did whatever reason it didn't work, and they basically shut off a hundred thousand different customers or whatever the number was. Uh, <laughs> and so the moral of the story, you know, I was talking to with some of my buddies, and they're like, like, well, thank God I don't use Microsoft. I'm like, since when did that matter about your domain? Yeah. I mean, if they take over your domain, it doesn't matter what operating system you're on. Uh, so that was pretty terrifying. Uh, Microsoft has that ability, and apparently they've used it at least a dozen times already. So um, wow. I'm not sure how. I mean, I know they're doing it for a good purpose, but geez, that's scary. Uh, <laughs> they're not. <laughs> right. Until, until they're they, not. Until they're not. Right. There was this uh, one of the, you know, we're talking about malware, you got to talk about cybercrime and stuff, and uh, we had that uh, email exchange earlier with Brian Krebs, who, uh, who writes for Krebs on Security. You know, I think everybody knows him. If you don't, go see his blog at Krebs on Security. <laughs> um, anyway, he's uh, releasing a new book sometime in, uh, sometime in November called Spam Nation, and uh, the subtitle is The Inside Story of Organized Crime from Global Epidemic to Your Front Door. So it's a, it's a great title. <laughs> Um, and you know, if Krebs is uh, writing it, he knows he has all the inside info. Anyway, he he emails Robert and I and uh, asks, so uh, so what do you do about securing shopping carts? Because apparently the his publisher Sourcebooks, uh, their shopping cart software was compromised. So here you are writing a book about cybercrime, and then the people who bought your book get their data stolen from your publisher. I mean, that's just you know rather <laughs> ironic and a little embarrassing. <laughs> So, so he's trying, so he's trying to be a good guy, try to help them out, and uh, so he's asking us questions about you know shopping cart software. How tough is this? Should this be do, you know something that they should be doing? And uh, you know we were talking about it and said you know shopping cart software is really really hard to get right, like really hard. Probably something not you shouldn't do and just give to a third party, which I think is the path they're going down. But uh, it seems like the bad guys know exactly what they're targeting. They're going to target the shopping cart software, and we knew this, so it's not terribly surprising. It just it kind of hits close to home. Yeah, absolutely. I've never seen a piece of shopping cart software that I thought was secure. How about you? <laughs> yeah, Stripe does it pretty well. Like, if anyone's going to do it well, I think they're kind of somewhere in the front of that pack, right? Like, other than that, I don't know. Do you feel like if you had access to their source Let's code? Let's not ask me that. <laughs> if it was a front of the pack, if there was a front of the pack, I'd say that Stripe has pretty good security the, in mind. Or the best it's, of the worst kind of thing. <laughs> So, yeah, it's like, yeah, hey, we, we, we test a thousand of these things, right? We test thousands of these things. We find the same kind of stuff all the time. Okay, can 
put a negative shipping mount? Can we change sales tax? Can we do this, right? I mean, it's hard. There's a lot of parameters, a lot of moving pieces. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, you have to do session state. You got to keep track of all the variables, you know, rolling things into the shopping cart, rolling stuff out. It's, it's actually quite complicated. Like, we make fun of people for not being able to do it right. I'm not sure I could do it right. You know, give me three years. <laughs> <and then maybe. laughs> it, it's really hard. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, so what else we got yep. going on out there? We got a... Uh, what, what, what was the other story? I kind of want to gloat about Hacker Combat real quick. Oh, you know what? I almost <laughs> forgot, and there's for good reason for this. Go ahead. Yes, yes. This, yes. Is, this is where we cut. Okay, whoever's video editing this, this is where we cut to the scoreboard where the, <laughs> where the number one slot is Matt Johansson, and then there's a big explosion, and, and, and then a shot of me walking away, not caring about the explosion. Yeah. It, I yeah, saw so, I, you're, what are you, you're number one at flags captured? Of, of these guys. You're, you're, <laughs> yeah. number one, you're number one. Uh, okay, I'm like number like 34. I tried to send an email to, to Robert and Jer here to, uh, to to try to gloat and get a screenshot of my name and then their names lower, and I couldn't zoom out far enough. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a new thing. You can zoom out. You can make it really small. <laughs> in, in fairness, Robert was on the noob team. I, I was, I, and I was also being pestered quite heavily, but that was all right. <laughs> <laughs> so for, for those that aren't familiar, Hacker Combat is our private capture the flag employee event at White Hat, so we break up in teams and we uh, compete against each other. And uh, Matt's on one of the Houston teams, I'm, I'm, uh, I play on one of the Santa Clara teams, and the trophy keeps coming back and forth, so you know, the great part is the trophy is coming back to Santa Clara, finally took it away from Houston, it was like the fourth exchange. <laughs> um, I, I, th I think Matt's team came in second, my team came in fourth, but a Saturday, Santa Clara team took it. Yep, came in second. Uh, oh, oh, and I heard, I heard about the dirty tactics. You, you guys, there's two dirty tactics. One, you guys were sandbagging the flags. Sandbagging? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> the very end, not, not. Oh, hanging on to them? No, actually, we were that slow. <laughs> it was that close. <laughs> yeah, so, somehow you gained like 300 points in the last five minutes. Oh, hash cracking takes a long time, man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, JP's team that uh, that won. Did you hear what they did? No. Oh man, so uh, so uh, they held back, they sandbagged a little bit, and threw a bunch of flags in at the la at probably 15 minutes in, and took over the lead. And then all of them started running SQL map against the scoring server and killed the thing. Yeah. The team that won yeah. did this. Yeah. Yeah. Freaking hackers! You can't trust any of them, man. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have to make certain adjustments uh, to next contest to account for this because they are still allowed to take the win because it was not explicitly there was no rule against it in hacker combat so the, the, right, right. the challenge master said hey, it's legal I guess we'll send the trophy back <laughs> piece by piece I'm going to dismantle it and mail, mail you piece by piece uh -huh. <laughs> alright so it's Friday we'll see, what, uh, we'll see what's going on next week but uh, a lot of cool things happening this week I'm sure a lot of cool stuff will be happening next week so uh, we'll be able to talk about that in HackerCast guys uh, have fun at the conference yep have fun in paradise yeah exactly <laughs>